Dolby Atmos has reinvented how entertainment is created and experienced, allowing creatives everywhere to place each sound precisely and dynamically for a more realistic and immersive audio experience. Whether you're gaming, watching your favorite movie or show, or listening to your favorite music, Dolby Atmos transports you into a spatial sound experience that draws you in deeper, so you hear and feel more. Using the integrated Dolby Atmos renderer, you can render and monitor Dolby Atmos mixes within Pro Tools without having to round trip to an external renderer. The Dolby Atmos renderer window provides comprehensive visualization of your Atmos mix from various perspectives and enables you to quickly switch between multi-speaker and binaural headphone monitoring. A setup pane gives you quick access to the headphone re-render, loudness re-render, custom re-renders, I.O. setup, trim and down mix, and group settings. For customers mixing Dolby Atmos for larger cinematic workflows or using the Dolby Atmos Music Panner plugin, Pro Tools Studio and Ultimate still support the external Dolby Atmos renderer. The Dolby Atmos internal renderer supports monitoring configurations up to 916 with Ultimate and 714 with Studio, as well as binaural for headphones, and allows users to create, mix, and deliver in Dolby Atmos all in Pro Tools. Let's take a closer look at how the integrated Dolby Atmos renderer works. The output of the renderer is internally routed to the designated monitor path in the Output tab of I.O. Setup. This will also determine the largest available monitor or speaker format. In most cases, this will match your room speaker configuration. If only working with headphones, choose that output. The Dolby Atmos tab in I.O. Setup allows selection and setup of the internal renderer. Here, you can enable Dolby Atmos and choose between the Dolby Atmos internal renderer or an external renderer if available. If starting from scratch, an easy way to create a base configuration is to use the default button to create a basic single 712 bed and 118 objects that can be configured in either mono or stereo. Choosing stereo object paths can be a good place to start. This makes it easier to work with stereo elements. The individual mono paths within stereo pairs can still be used separately so you have flexibility of assignment in the Pro Tools mixer. You also have the ability to create custom subpaths for beds, enabling better compatibility with earlier Dolby Atmos enabled sessions. Also in the Dolby Atmos renderer tab are drop downs to configure the dedicated loudness re render and the headphone re render, which run live alongside the main monitoring output. Measuring loudness can be important if you're planning to distribute your Atmos mix, as various streaming services have loudness requirements. Loudness for Dolby Atmos is most often measured using a 5 1 re render. The live headphone re render lets you flexibly route a discrete stereo or binaural monitoring output in parallel to your primary monitoring outputs. This makes it easy to listen to the binaural render without changing or interrupting your monitor configuration. The Custom Re-Renders button opens the Custom Re-Render Configuration window. This is where you can create different format and group filtered re-renders for live direct monitoring or for measurement and spatialization via third-party plugins. Custom live re-renders can be used for recording to tracks and they're also available as offline bounce sources. The Group button provides the ability to add and modify groups, allowing you to make logical collections of tracks. These are typically used to associate channels to stems, such as dialogue and music, making it easy to create re-renders like an m &E or stems for music when you bounce your mix. Groups can also define color coding for your paths, providing useful visual cues in the Pro Tools mixer. Group assignments can be made in the I.O. setup window. The Trim and Down Mix page allows for advanced changes to be made to the fold downs to channel-based formats like 5.1, Dolby Pro Logic, and Stereo, for example. These settings can help ensure that a consistent mix is delivered when played back in smaller formats. For example, in a mix with a lot of sound effects or music above and behind, you may want to reduce the levels a little to make sure the dialogue and screen action remains clear. This information is stored as metadata in the ADM file and affects the monitoring outputs and live re-renders. Now let's look at how that appears in the Pro Tools Edit and Mix window, along with the Dolby Atmos Renderer window, which becomes active when the internal renderer is enabled. Starting at the top left is a Settings button, 
to access the most commonly used settings for Atmos, drop-down menus for both headphone and loudness re-renders, and shortcuts to the custom re-renders, I.O. setup, trim and down mix, and group settings. Next is the monitoring format selector. As mentioned, this will only allow monitoring as wide as the monitor path. At supported buffer sizes, a binaural option is provided here for situations where the main monitor output feeds your headphones. Below this are named and color-coded Dolby Atmos Group solos and mutes. This gives a quick way to isolate specific Dolby Atmos groups and check you've assigned beds and objects to the correct groups. Following the current solo options and behavior, clicking will solo, command clicking on Mac or control click on Windows will mute, and adding the option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows will either mute or solo all groups. Objects with active panning information are shown in gray when muted. Across the top right is a general mute button and then mutes for all beds and objects separately. On the left, we have channel number and level indicators. The enclosing boxes showing channels grouped as beds and the individual channels configured as objects, a blue ring to indicate an active assignment. In the middle, we have a real-time display of objects and their active movement and levels. The room model can be either a theater or person view. Under show are several options of what information can be displayed alongside the object. You can freely move the position by clicking and dragging with your mouse, as well as a few preset positions for top and rear. The top right shows the currently selected monitor format. By hovering your mouse over the speaker position indicators, you can reveal speaker solo and mutes. Click on S to solo and M to mute each speaker individually. Holding Option on Mac or Alt on Windows while clicking will solo or mute by layer. Holding Control on Mac or Start on Windows will mute by row. And below this we have a meter. Starting with a very simple example. Here we have a stereo audio track with some drums which has been assigned to the bed by clicking Output and selecting Bed. When we play, you will notice that the meters in the bed section, as we pan, move across the channels of the 712 bed. The next track is assigned to the first available stereo object under the track controls and the bus object toggle set to Object. As we pan this around, we see the level and the matching channel number, but we also get a representation of the position, size, and level. You can change the binaural mode setting during playback directly from the track, avoiding having to stop playback and making changes in I.O. setup. Below the binaural mode is a group assignment. When making assignments in tracks, the groups can be different depending on whether the track is in bed or object mode. Opening the Atmos session that's included with the Pro Tools installer, we can see a better representation of what the Dolby Atmos renderer looks like when more tracks are feeding beds and objects. The re-render and custom re-render outputs as configured in the Dolby Atmos tab are available as inputs for auxes and audio tracks, where they can be monitored, recorded, or used for loudness measurements or other plugins. A master fader can be assigned to the renderer output to control its level. Finally, Pro Tools can directly output a Dolby Atmos ADM file, as well as re-renders in various formats. ADM files are the standard delivery format for an Atmos mix, containing all the audio and metadata for the project. Re-renders, as configured in the custom re-render setup, are down mixes to channel-based formats from stereo all the way up to 916. You can configure your bounce to create multiple re-renders at the same time as your ADM export. By using the group feature in the Dolby Atmos tab or in tracks, you can create customized stem outputs such as dialogue, music and effects, or music stems like vocals, drums, and synths, for example, all in one process. You can also track bounce, freeze, and commit returns from the renderer to auxes.
If plugins are inserted on those tracks, such as compression or limiting, that processing will be applied. This allows you to produce not only various re-renders, but process audio conforming to requirements, such as loudness, faster than real time. Be sure to check out the demo session tour and get more information on Pro Tools at avid.com.